And uh, there are a couple of um, um, housekeeping elements that uh, I would like to share with you so that uh, it becomes uh, a enjoyable session for all of you. Um, first of all, the webinar will be recorded. Um, so uh, I hope that you're all okay with this. Um, the speakers have um, secured copyright permissions, so everything will be a public domain that they are presenting. Uh, please note that uh, anything that we are uh, um, expressing as opinions and conclusions recommendations are the responsibility of the speakers. This is not uh, necessarily IWA's opinion. Very important uh, so that we can have some interaction are uh, the two um, boxes below for the chat box. This is just for general requests and interactive activities like saying hello, I am from Germany, um, I like to say hello. Uh, very important if you have questions regarding the presentation, please use the Q&A box. Um, and uh, let's say we, we have Q&As after each presentation. So usually the questions will be linked to this presentation to the speaker. Um, if there are some questions to other speakers, uh, please make sure that this is mentioned in the question. So again, Q&A box, this is what um, we will use um, in the, um, uh, the Q&A session after each presentation. Then, um, uh, we are hosting this on behalf of the IWA uh, Disinfection Specialist Group, where I'm a proud member uh, since uh, several years, together uh, with my colleague Emmanuel Mousset from uh, CNS to CNRS from Nancy. Um, I'm from uh, Veolia, uh, uh, leading the uh, uh, sales for the Ozonia globally. Uh, we are a group of dedicated professionals really driving forward the disinfection, so you're you're welcome to join, and we even have some seats available in our committee uh, for uh, eager professionals that want to uh, expand their network. So then I would, uh, before we start with the presentations, I would like to run one quick poll uh, to see actually where you are from. Uh, so what is your professional background? Please obviously select just one. Um, are you a student? Um, are you a scientist in university, a consultant, plant operator? technology provider, regulator, government, industry, or not listed. We would like to see what kind of um, people have joined uh, today's session um, and uh, are curious about your reply. We leave this open for one, two minutes um, so that um, um, you can reply to, uh, reply to this properly. Again, I hope that uh, question is easy and quickly to respond to that we have um, um, a good view of uh, who is joining today. And since we have more than 100 participants, I hope that's at least uh, 50 or 60 reply fairly quickly. So how does it look like? Ah, we have a very broad range of, uh, um, of participants. So nobody is really dominating. There's a bit more um, academia presence, but also consultants, technology providers with 11%, industry 10. Um, so I think this is... Uh, a great diverse group that we have here. And I, I think that the presentations are really uh, giving everybody uh, something from, uh, from this group. Um, so thanks for the poll, because now I will actually introduce our first uh, speaker. Oh, sorry, this is the agenda, first of all, uh, pardon me. Um, uh, so while we are almost done with point number one, we then have uh, Galina um, with uh, uh, a presentation on UVC LED. Um, Oren will follow with um, a electrical pulse oxidation process. Then Emmanuel will take over as moderator to introduce Engrafia um, on electrochemical process uh, disinfection and uh, uh, Jiang Feng uh, with a uh, electrical field treatment before we then come to the conclusion by Emmanuel. So that's the exciting time to come. Now, um, the first speaker. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Galina. Shabrina from Akisense. Um, she is, uh, has a master um, of uh, environmental engineering uh, from the uh, TU Munich, is now also living uh, in Germany um, as, um, and works as an application engineer for Akisense. Her presentation is um, called, is a transition to UVC LED disinfection technology in municipal applications viable? So Galina, the floor is yours. Um, happy to listen to you. Just checking. Can you hear me well? I can. Yeah, perfect. Okay, good. Um, 
Okay. So first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me and uh, Acquisense for the conference. Um, it's a great pleasure to introduce our technology and our innovations. Uh, and how do I switch slides? Do I do this or? Ah. So yeah, first I will tell a bit about the company. Acquisense it's a US-based company. We can switch to another slide. Yes, so US-based company. Um, we have two facilities in the US, but at the same time, we have several offices all over the world in Europe, in India, in Japan. Uh, so we are going internationally already. Though, um, though the company is quite young, but the development and the research started quite a while ago in 2003, which means it allowed us to build the technology from the beginning on and gives, of course, a huge advantage to see the development of the technology, its advantages and disadvantages, so to know everything from the beginning on. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, it's about the technology, UV disinfection in general. It's quite known, quite old. We didn't invent it. So that's why I will not really tell a lot about this. On the next slide, we can show how it works. Yes, so there it's a physical method and it's worked on the principle of UV light being able to penetrate microorganisms and to destroy their DNA. So it means that after this, they cannot repro reproduce, um, which causes inactivation and disinfection. The method is very reliable, very old, very well known, very well established. Uh, but originally, only um, classic UV lamps were used. So it's uh, mercury-based lamps uh, in quartz sleeves. Uh, I think maybe next slide. Yeah. Uh, so these types of lamps, like classic ones, of course, they can provide uh, reliable disinfection, but they have several uh, disadvantages for, like, it, and they are not applicable in many applications because of this. So for instance, they require quite long time for warm up. Uh, something like up to 15 minutes it can be. It would be okay for long, um, for continuous application, but if we are talking about uh, intermittent flow, when you need to turn on and off uh, water flow, then it's not possible because it takes too long. 15 minutes, it's too long and it requires a lot of energy as well. Another one, it's durability. Um, because each lamp has a quartz sleeve, they are quite fragile. So it means like for many applications, they, for example, in transportation, if you need to disinfect something in train or plane, it would be a problem. And plus they contain mercury, uh, which is a highly poisonous uh, substance and it's not always applicable. So on the next slide, we can see there, yeah, the summary of LEDs, why we actually switch to uh, UV LED devices and to, uh, to LED source, because it has several um, very important advantages. So for instance, it has almost zero uh, on off time to start. So it starts immediately. As soon as the device is on, disinfection starts. And this is just perfect for intermittent or for um, low floors, yeah, and for intermittent um, applications. Another one is durability. Uh, they are very robust. They can be used in uh, transportation, for instance. And for example, we even have a project with NASA. So they are used for disinfection at, in a spacecraft, which uh, shows a lot. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so initially, uh, as I told, their technology is quite young. That's why it's like still developing. And it's very, very exciting to observe this because with every year we can see that the power of LEDs, they double. M maybe next slide. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these graphs, they show that uh, unit power of LEDs, they grow uh, in, they grow like with every year incredibly. So we can see exponential growth in the last years. And on the same time, <clears throat> their pricing, it drops also drastically. Like these factors, they allow to bring LEDs from just an interesting technology that was developed, started developing uh, some time ago to 
a very practical product that can be already used in so many applications. We can go to the next one. So about um, the increased power of LEDs, it's not just about their increased single, uh, single uh, LED, right? It's about the whole system. So even systems, they became much more powerful. So if we compare systems that is available now to the system that was available from the beginning, like let's say in 2005, it's almost a million times more powerful, which means it would allow high disinfection um, and disinfection of high flow, flow rates. Uh, so all these factors, their rapid development, um, the de drastically decreased uh, costs and plus high interest from the public because of environmental concerns and because of regulatory drivers, they all bring uh, us to increase deployment of LEDs. So they actually start, um, it also, it opened up a lot of possible applications. So for instance, uh, now LEDs, they already starting uh, dominate uh, um, slow, uh, like low flow applications in many industries, for example, in food industry, I think it will be next slide. Yeah, uh, so many uh, leading world companies, they already choose LEDs because of these advantages for low flow, inter uh, for low flow and intermittent usage. Yeah, this is, um, I will tell a bit about our platform, like what we have, like range of our products. So these abilities of LEDs, um, like compact size, that they're very robust, uh, they're very powerful. It allows us to create a very wide portfolio of products. Uh, we have like, for instance, we have a smallest uh, UV system in the world, like uh, for water disinfection, that can treat up to eight liters per minute. To the one of the biggest in the world based on uh, UVC LED is our first municipal water treatment system. This was installed last year. Um, it's Terra. Um, next, slide, next slide, please. I will tell a bit more about this. Yeah, so this one is really huge for us. It's a huge step because it's the first municipal size water treatment. Before we were talking just about point of use systems, right? Something like few liters per minute max. But this one, it's 300 cubic meters per hour. So it's, it, it's big, it's different level, it's different scale. It means that it also shows that LEDs, they are finally ready, ready for municipal installations. Um, also, it's important to mention that uh, this device is made on the base of UVC LED arrays. So what it means, it means that many, many LEDs, they are used very dense to each other. Uh, that allows to have a very high uh, UV power density on, um, on a small area it allows and it allows a high disinfection of uh, high, water, uh, high water flows. And this is possible because of their uh, last generation LEDs that are super powerful and plus to, to a very good thermal management. This is something that we also learned with just with experience and time how to do it. Just a few years ago, something like this wouldn't be possible yet. Um, and actually, Terra, this type of installation, it uh, caused a huge interest. It evoked a huge interest from the public. So and now we have already so many requests for similar installations for the next half a year. I think it will be on the next slide. So these are like our upcoming already confirmed installation for the next six months. Uh, the success is even bigger than we expected. It means that people and industries, uh, they are interested in this. Um, I think this is pretty much it. <laughs> if you could go to the next slide. Yes, so that's it from my side. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, oh, thanks a lot, Galina, for this uh, interesting journey um, of uh, for the UVC LED. And it's uh, really quite amazing that uh, uh, where it started off with a few GPMs that we are now looking at, uh, uh, let's say, properly treating um, two MGD or 300 cubic meter per hour uh, in a UV uh, LED reactor. 
Um, so that also leads to my first question that I uh, would like to ask. Um, the typical design points for the municipal drinking water plants. Uh, you already mentioned the flow, 300 cubic meter. Um, can you say something about UV transmittance and UV dose um, design points uh, that you would typically select? So uh, what we are what we are working now on it's just drinking water applications. So of course we are planning on wastewater treatment applications as well, but it's a next step because it's um, always more challenging uh, in terms of UVT, as you know, and like the water quality is very much different. Uh, with drinking water, it's always more predictable. That's why we started from this. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so this is like now we are sure, let's say about UVT above 80. Mm -hmm. This is something we could do. Um, mm -hmm. And the rest, we just didn't try it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I would say like for general water treatment applications in municipal scale, we are ready. Okay. Good. And that I think leads uh, right to the uh, question in the Q&A, uh, uh, the specific energy invested in kilowatt hours per cubic meter for the treatment of water. Um, that's also maybe in comparison to conventional low pressure, conventional, conventional medium pressure for the same for the same disinfection performance. What can you say about the uh, energy? Uh, so, invested? yeah, if you are talking, like, as I mentioned um, before, LED, a huge advantage of LED, technology, LED powers, um, light source, it's that it's able to have instant on and off. And this is where we save energy. Mm. So if there is application that requires intermittent flow, then we would save energy on this. But at the same time, for municipal, it's quite tricky. It's quite mm -hmm. often continuous flow. And that's why still like uh, classic mercury lamps, they will be more efficient here, just because they, they have high efficiency. Um, they have just high efficiency. So they need less energy for the same, uh, for the same output. So, it depends on application a lot. Mm. If it continues, then it's mm. still uh, mm. classic lamps will be more efficient. Yeah. If it's intermittent, then we can start uh, yeah, looking into it. Um, there is another uh, question uh, regarding cleaning. Um, how do you clean the uh, UV LED reactors? Uh, is it similar as a classic design with wiping and chemical cleaning? Um, if, like at these installations that we have now, there is no wiping because it's a very high, uh, there is very high UVT, uh, so no need for this. But a part of this, it's quite the same. So no wiping, but you can uh, clean it with chemical, with mm -hmm. acids, with mm -hmm. like low concentration acids. Good, then uh, uh, more on, on also maintenance, how long um, does the instrument last? I would say that's probably the reactor itself, but also uh, are there any consumables um, regarding uh, the UV lamps, um, i.e. LEDs? Uh, there's mm -hmm. also the question regarding costs. Um, I'm not sure what you would uh, say, uh, what you would give there as an estimate cost per liter of water produced. Mm -hmm. um, I will just add something about the cleaning. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, their problem with cleaning is less than with classic mm -hmm. lamps mm -hmm. because LEDs, they don't, um, they don't heat up. Mm -hmm. So normally the problem of classic lamps or especially like medium pressure lamps, they heat up a lot and this attracts like um, additional folding. Mm -hmm. With LEDs, it's, this process is separated, right? So LEDs don't heat up on their own and they don't heat up the water, but they hit like their other part is heated up drastically. That's why we need thermal management. But the folding is much lower. And for the spare part, uh, and, and how long? Yeah, how? Um, what's the duration? Um, let's say, or first of all, maybe of the entire system, you have a lifetime for the entire system, and then lifetime for the LEDs. For the entire system, I think it would be difficult to say because yeah, except 20 of LEDs, years or something. <laughs> I mean, I guess like a normal system because yep, LEDs yep. it's the part that will be replaced on the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, their lifetime would depend a lot on how you run it. 
so it can be like up to 10 like the same like with classic lamps mm. it can be up to 10,000 hours mm. if you decrease the current so if you don't run it on the full scale mm. but if you need it to be very powerful you increase the current and this will decrease the um, lifetime yeah. so it's very adjustable yeah. um okay there, there's that Question again regarding power, uh, conventional, uh, low pressure, medium pressure, or LEDs. And I said you already mentioned that if it's continuous, low pressure is more effective. I'm not sure. Um, um, are we, from the LED standpoint, similar to medium pressure right now? Um, or is that, um, uh, uh, where, where do you see, let's say, order of magnitude, the differences when it would be continuous? Uh, no, no. Um, LEDs, they are lower still. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's continuous floor, they, yeah, they would need like more power to produce the same, the same amount of UV power uh, for continuous. For continuous, yeah, exactly. You know, yes, we're, we're, and, then, and then you <laughs> in the industrial yeah. applications also even there could be municipal applications with. Uh, coupled to a filter, right? So, so where you have- uh, Absol Absolutely, mm, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Then uh, I think that's the last one that we would have here is uh, how, uh, but uh, let's say this is more general. How do you address the issue of maintaining residual disinfection in the transmission network? <laughs> so that's uh, uh, probably uh, more a leading question for general disinfection, right? <laughs> Exactly, it's a huge question. <laughs> it can be the topic of the next conference, I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, so maybe I can even rub in that the UV will disinfect on the spots and then there will be it needs to be coupled with other disinfection technologies for residual. Um, it's not that like this, to, mm. or uh, nowadays it's like more and more popular to um, to install UV disinfection just at the point of use. Mm. So like before you use the water, um, this is also an option. So people, for example, at home, people can install it just in their bathroom or something like this, or just at the entrance of their home. This would be also an option. Um, there are a few more Q and A's. Maybe Galina, you could even check if you want to uh, answer something in writing, because I would like to go over to the next uh, uh, speaker now uh, for the sake of time. Um, so you can, uh, if you check on the Q and A box, you could you could answer uh, directly, right? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Because then thank I like, uh, thank you, Galina, again. And uh, let's see if there are more questions coming up a little later on. Because okay. now it's, uh, we're jumping from Germany to Israel. Uh, Oren, um, many thanks for being here today. Uh, Oren Gaffrey is the chairman of Buddies. Uh, he holds a BSc and MSc um, of Materials and Process Engineering from the Ben Gurion University and also Business Management um, um, from the Hebrew University in Israel. Uh, he is the holder of several patents and author of various articles, uh, including in the fields of pulse technology and water and wastewater technologies. And that's what we're here today to hear um, your presentation on EPOP. Um, so the floor is yours, Oren. And uh, <coughs> thank you, I Dr. D Dinkloff. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. And uh, I'll be happy to describe what we are doing at Wadis. Uh, in general, uh, uh, Wadis is uh, developing technologies for uh, water and wastewater treatment using electrical pulse uh, in the water, uh, high voltage electrical pulses. Uh, we are using it generally for several applications. The first application which is already in the market is for disinfection and treatment of sludge in wastewater treatment plants. And uh, there we have a, a very high uh, 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 voltage in very short duration of pulses, which are creating both disinfection and uh, the uh, increasing the solubility of the uh, uh, sludge before it's going into the uh, uh, anaerobic digestion. And also after that, to disinfect it for other application like class A. 
Uh, or, uh, sorry, quickly, process... quickly to inject, you would need to let Isabella know if you need to uh, have go to the next slide because we are still at the entrance oh, slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The other process uh, that we are developing is electrical pulse oxidation process, which we call it EPOP. And uh, we use it as an alternative. Uh, the aim is to use it as an alternative for advanced oxidation processes other uh, for both decomposition of micropollutant and disinfection of the wastewater. The next slide, uh, I will describe the EPOP technology. The EPOP is uh, also high voltage electrical pulses at very high frequency, which are done directly on the effluent uh, in a multi-electrodes reactor with carrier gas that could be either air, oxygen, or sometimes others. Uh, the phenomena that we are, and of course, it's create plasma on those uh, multi electrodes uh, within the uh, liquid. Uh, by the plasma, we are doing two, two stages. The first stage is that uh, the plasma itself through the high temperature which is uh, produced there. Uh, uh, and UV is doing the work of both disinfection and decomposition of uh, micropollutant. And then through the plasma, the second stage is that uh, uh, we are creating free radicals, which are uh, continue to do the work on the uh, flow of uh, the wastewater. On the next slide, you can see it schematically. Well, we can see the stage one where we have the molecules. The plasma itself is doing the decomposition and then create free radicals which continue to work as the flow continues. In this case, we found out, of course, that we have both hydrogen peroxide, uh, oxygen, ozone, and some others that continue to do the, uh, uh, the work on the liquid. I have to mention we have three, uh, four patents already, three are uh, already uh, granted, and one which is uh, at the national phase in uh, PCT. Uh, and uh, we have started to do, uh, we are doing work also on this technology, as we can see on the next slide, please. Uh, this is a demo system that we put at the Shafdan wastewater treatment plant. Uh, this is the Tel Aviv uh, wastewater, and we put a demo, a small demo, together with Mekorot, which is uh, Israel national water supply company. And under the uh, Horizon 2020 uh, program, uh, and uh, the, uh, what we can see here is uh, inside the uh, container, we have on the number uh, one is the oxygen generator, uh, we have number two is the pulse generator that we are building it totally from the beginning, uh, which is working on pulses between uh, 500 to 2000 pulses in a second. We have the reactor. In this case, the reactor is small on the demo. Uh, it's meant to work only with like uh, two to five cubic meters an hour. Then we have continue the, uh, 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 the uh, we have, you are using also a nanobubble generator as an option. And there's an option also to use contact tank if we want to have better results uh, to uh, use the ozone, which is created also by this uh, process. So uh, uh, on the uh, current uh, discussion, on the current work, on the first work, we didn't use the uh, contact tank at all. Uh, and uh, uh, we use it just directly, the work on the, uh, on the uh, uh, waste water, on the wastewater. On the next slide, 
we see the arrangement of the tests which were done there. We have the secondary effluent coming in. Uh, it was the pre-filter at 450 uh, microns, then went through uh, polyaluminum chloride, uh, and then 2.2 milligram per liter, and then it went uh, to, through uh, hydrogen uh, peroxide, sorry, flocculation, and then the hydrogen peroxide, and then it went in parallel. One lane was directly to ozonation, and the second lane went to the EPOC process, so that we can learn the differences and the results between the two. Uh, on the uh, next slide, we can see some of the results. We made it with different type of parameters, each test, and then uh, with the best uh, parameters, we see that we have, as you can see on the arrow, blue arrow, we have more than 97% of all tested micropollutant. Uh, the micropollutant were tested in, uh, uh, were taken by Mekorot and tested in Germany, uh, in Karlsruhe, at the, uh, uh, is uh, the W, uh, uh, and uh, then repeatedly we made those tests and saw that we are uh, really uh, destroying more than 97% on all uh, of the work we did with the best parameters. So uh, what, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the ozonation was doing also very good work on most of the molecules, but for example, on the iodine, uh, which are used for uh, you know for X-ray, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the there was uh, limited results with those nation and very good results on the uh, plasma on the uh, EPOP technology. We can see also uh, we just tested also uh, the. Uh, uh, both uh, uh, all the uh, microorganisms. Uh, the, these tests were done, were taken at the uh, Mekorot uh, Central Laboratories. And we saw that uh, we are really uh, removing most of the uh, uh, coliforms. And uh, also there were tests uh, which are not here for vir viruses. And uh, it was, uh, something which happened on the ozonation, we saw some regrowth later on, uh, which was a phenomena that uh, needs to be uh, understood on the uh, after the process. Uh, then uh, on the next slide, we can see also results on the uh, uh, DBPs like uh, uh, bromides and NDMAs, which were lower by the uh, 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 EPOP process compared to the ozonation. And uh, on the next slide, uh, there's, uh, we tried to compare the energy we used with uh, compared to other AOPs. Uh, in our case, the energy level was higher than uh, ozonation. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, these are, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, first uh, type of generators that we were using, and now we are building other generators, which will also be more economic and more and better in the results. Next slide. <clears throat> I would summarize uh, our conclusions that the uh, EPOP and ozonation results show similar reduction on easy uh, degradable uh, TROCs. Uh, the EPOP was better on a, a difficult type of uh, compound. Uh, uh, the uh, DBP also on the NDMA and bromate were lower. Uh, 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 disinfection, uh, is a, a process which we see already on a, a very good uh, disinfection coming on all type of, uh, uh, on all the, the uh, tests. 
and uh, but the energy consumption, as I mentioned, is greater. And also, uh, we have to di discuss uh, later on the uh, to reduce the uh, cost of our current systems uh, compared to the ozonation. So, uh, the next slide, I want to say thanks to the Horizon 2020 Aquanest project and to Mekorot Israel National Lab Laboratory for that. Uh, uh, Chaim Chikorel, which is also, uh, Dr. Chaim Chikorel, which is also, I think, on this webinar, uh, helped us also on the process. And we published together a, a paper which describe all the results at the IOA conference in, uh, in Nice, uh, just uh, before the corona. <laughs> so thank you very much. Oren, yeah, thank you very much um, for um, the very, uh, let's say, uh, phenomenal journey of this AOP process. Again, AOP means then not just disinfection, but more. Um, so that's, uh, that is uh, a good piece of the puzzle to solve uh, more challenging uh, water situations than just dis disinfection. We have um, Q and A's coming, uh, Q Q's coming in, the A's are now our chance. Um, there is the first one, um, can a, uh, EPOP be effectively used for healthcare wastewater treatment to reduce antimicrobial re resistance? Yes, uh, uh, of course, we have to try every single molecule. But uh, yes, I believe it's a very powerful tool mm -hmm. that can work on any kind of APIs. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, we're thinking about PFAS and others. Uh, but uh, this is to come. OK, good. Then um, let's say if we are comparing this more regarding uh, with an ozone system, um, maybe uh, to highlight again the difference in power consumption. Uh, what's the order of magnitude difference there right now? Yes, I think we were about double. I okay. mean, uh, we were in the range of 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Mm -hmm. a kilowatt per uh, cubic meter mm -hmm. uh, and the ozonation was in the range of 0.1 i think something like that oh, okay yeah good uh, so that's something that can be definitely uh, be addressed with optimization yes of course we are we know how to optimize it mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. i mean uh, we were using uh, pulses of about 120 nanoseconds mm -hmm. and uh, we want to use now uh, the uh, uh, to reduce it uh, to, to at least uh, uh, three times. And by that, we keep the high energy, but the shorter duration and fast uh, rise time mm -hmm. so that uh, the uh, technology will be much, much better. I mean, it will be reduced, I estimate, by at least 50% the energy consumption. Okay. Good, good. Well, then you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Another aspect when you compare it with, um, uh, with for example, ozone, uh, you need a lot of health and safety devices um, like ozone room monitoring and residual ozone destruction when you install an ozone system. Yes. What about um, uh, the EPOP system? What kind of devices would be necessary there? Yeah, we, uh, on the system, uh, on the uh, container, we used to have uh, both uh, uh, ozone destructor and uh, we uh, uh, will try to make it even better by using the ozone mm -hmm. on a, uh, 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 with a contact tank and mm -hmm. so on, and, and reuse maybe even uh, partially of the water mm -hmm. tank. Okay. Great. Um, and I think that ends right now the Q and A's that I have received. Maybe there will be more coming up and then you can check, uh, Oren. Um, sure. Okay, yep. thank you uh, very much. Thank you. For the presentation. And then I hand over to my colleague, Emmanuel. To Hi, the... thank you. Thank you, Ludwig. Thank you, Ludwig. So a good, uh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Thank you again for participating, attending this uh, in the webinar that I hope it will interest you uh, as much as possible. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, pleased, uh, I'm pleased to take the lead now to introduce uh, uh, Engracia uh, La Casa. 
she's an associate professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Castilla-La Mancha in Spain since 2021. And currently, she belongs to the Electrochemical and Environmental Engineering Research Group, edited by Manuel Rodrigo. Her research has been focused on the study of environmental applications of electrochemical engineering, from the removal of fine organic pollutants by electrocoagulation to more recently, the removal of water on airborne bacteria from hospital effluents. And today, she will present the works about the recent advance in the production of oxygen by electrochemical processes for water disinfection. Please, and Gracia, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, thank you, Emmanuel, for your uh, kind presentation. I think that you can hear me well. Is it okay? Yes, it's good. Okay. Um, well, as Emmanuel uh, uh, told us, I am going to speak about the, the production of um, oxidants using electrochemical uh, technologies uh, for uh, water disinfection. Um, in the next slide, um, yeah, I, um, I am going to, to start just uh, saying uh, what some, uh, probably you already know. That is the, the World Health Organization um, considered the antimicrobial resistance as uh, one of the top 10 uh, global public uh, health concerns. And the uh, hospital effluence uh, presents a high load of uh, antibiotic, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. But uh, the lack of regulation in the treatment of this uh, effluent leads to their uh, mixture with the uh, urban wastewater. Uh, however, uh, most of the wastewater treatment plants are not uh, especially designed to remove uh, this uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Uh, what we propose in, uh, in our research is uh, to develop a, a preliminary pretreatment of, uh, of hospital effluent to remove uh, these antibiotic resistant bacteria before they discharge into the municipal sewers. Uh, then um, it could uh, prevent the spread, the spread of, the, uh, of this bacteria uh, into the environment in case, uh, in case you use the reclaimed water for irrigation in, uh, in agriculture or, or even in, in urban uh, green spaces. Um, we are focused on the, as I told you before, uh, we are focused on the treatment of uh, hospital effluents and uh, mainly in, in, in these two ones. Um, in the treatment of uh, liquid uh, hospital effluents as the hospital urines, uh, which uh, may contain a high load of uh, waterborne uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. And uh, from the last uh, year, uh, we are working also on the uh, disinfection of uh, the hospital indoor air uh, that uh, contains uh, airborne uh, antibiotic bacteria bacteria named as uh, bioaerosols. Um, how to remove this uh, bacteria? Uh, well, uh, we propose the uh, production of oxidants using electrochemical uh, processes. Um, the, um, the production of oxidants uh, may be controlled uh, by several parameters, uh, such as, uh, such as uh, for example, uh, applying different uh, current intensities, uh, selecting uh, different electrode materials or even the using different electrochemical cell designs. Um, here uh, I show you two different electrochemical cells, a uh, uh, microfluidic uh, flow through and a commercial one uh, named uh, microson. Uh, in the next slide, um, I'm going to uh, um, I'm going to explain you uh, how to produce oxidants in uh, in liquid phase. Um, to do it, uh, we use uh, simulated uh, urine, uh, which composition is shown in in, in the table, and uh, we introduce uh, this urine into a feed tank and then uh, move through the electrochemical cell via via peristaltic pump and then recirculate it again to the to the feed tank. 
the electrochemical cell is connected to a power supply where uh, we can uh, fix uh, different uh, current, current intensities. Uh, this is the, the experimental system. Uh, so uh, in the figure, uh, we can observe the production of uh, oxidants in the case of using a microfluidic uh, flow through electrochemical cell uh, using uh, mixed methyl oxide anodes and applying a current, uh, intensity, a current density of 50 ampere per uh, meter. Uh, we observe that uh, this electrochemical cell promotes the formation of chloramines. Uh, the formation of chloramines uh, takes place due to the chemical uh, reaction between ammonium ions that uh, are uh, already contained in the, in the initial solution of uh, urine and uh, uh, with uh, the chemical reaction of ammonium ion with hypochlorite. The hypochlorite is uh, electrochemically uh, produced by the oxidation of uh, chloride that it is also present in the, in the synthetic uh, urine. Uh, here it is important to uh, highlight that the, the oxidants uh, monitor are not the total oxidants produced, but uh, only the oxidants that remain in solution without uh, taking any reaction. Um, using uh, the, the other electrochemical cell, uh, the microson cell, uh, this cell promotes the uh, formation of uh, ozone uh, since it is especially designed to, uh, to, to produce ozone. Um, uh, as expected, uh, when we apply a higher uh, current intensities, the concentration of ozone uh, increases. Um, at this point, uh, when uh, the production uh, takes, pla takes place in, in the liquid uh, phase, uh, we are working with the uh, hospital, simulated hospital uh, urines. And in this uh, same media, uh, we have the, uh, the target bacteria. In this case, uh, we selected the Klebsiella pneumoniae as the target antibiotic bacteria. Uh, since uh, this uh, is after the E. coli, uh, one of the uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria, uh, which uh, causes uh, urinary tract infection in a uh, hospital and also um, it is uh, resistant to do some uh, antibiotics as uh, carbapenem or uh, betalactam. Uh, as we can observe in these uh, figures, the uh, production of oxidants in, in liquid phase uh, is a promising technology for the removal of uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Uh, since uh, since uh, we can observe that uh, using the microfluidic uh, flow, flow through cell, we attain a complete disinfection after uh, before uh, sorry before uh, two hours applying uh, 50 ampere per square uh, meter, and in the case of using the microson cell that is the figure on the on the right, uh, we can observe that uh, we are able to uh, attain a complete disinfection uh, applying uh, one ampere um, one ampere, and uh, the complete disinfection takes place before uh, one hour. Um, under this uh, condition, uh, we wanted to, to check a more real uh, or more realistic um, uh, hospital urine. And then in the next slide, um, I'm, uh, I show you that uh, we use uh, urine with uh, not only contain the Klebsiella pneumoniae, but also uh, enter other antibiotic resistant bacteria as enter Enterococcus fecalis and E. coli. Um, as we can observe uh, on the figure uh, B, uh, the microson uh, cell um, attains a complete disinfection also before uh, one hour, regardless the, the antibiotic resistant bacteria. Um, that means that this uh, electrochemical uh, cell is a faster one uh, to, to remove the bacteria. But if we if we compare the these uh, two electrochemical cell in terms of efficiency, and uh, we selected we selected uh, uh, 0.4 ampere hour per liter, uh, we can observe that in the case of the microson uh, applying this uh, electric charge, uh, we are only able to reduce uh, one or two logs of this bacteria. Uh, however, in the case of using the microfluidic uh, flow, flow through, 
uh, we are able to remove up to uh, six lobes of, of this bacteria. So the, the microfluidic uh, flow through is a, a more efficient one, but um, slower in the removal of this, of this bacteria. Just to say that uh, it's not only important to remove the, the antibiotic-resistant bacteria, but also the genes. Um, here, uh, I show you the evolution of uh, a target uh, gene uh, named uh, black KPC gene. And uh, we use the real-time uh, PCR system to follow this, the evolution of, of genes. And uh, we can observe that using the microfluidic flow through, the, it is maintained a, a, constant, uh, a constant concentration of these uh, genes uh, since uh, we are um, not able to obtain a complete disinfection. But in the case of using the, the microzone, if we compare the uh, initial, uh, that means uh, zero time, with the final, that means uh, three hours uh, of treatment, uh, we observe an increase of uh, the cycle uh, threshold. That means uh, that we have an important decrease in the concentration of, of this target uh, gene. Uh, additionally, uh, we also wanted to, to check uh, the morphology of this bacteria after, um, after uh, producing uh, these uh, oxidants in, in, the, in the same phase, in the same um, media that is the, the bacteria. And uh, uh, we observe that uh, using uh, the microfluidic flow through that promotes uh, chlorine uh, disinfectant, it induces uh, small pits in the cell wall. But uh, in the case of working with a microzone uh, that promotes the formation of ozone, um, we are able to induce severe damages in the cell walls, resulting in the integrity loss of the bacterial structures. Um, at this point, I would like to say that uh, uh, we wanted to test uh, this technology in a real environment, but uh, we were not able to uh, do it because of the restrictions uh, in the hospital of our city uh, due to the, the, the COVID pandemic. So we were not able to, to check this technology yet. Um, well, in the next slide, um, I'm going to, um, to describe what we are working on since the last year. And uh, we are working on the production of oxidants in a uh, gas phase using electrochemical technology. And uh, we, are, we have um, started with the production of ozone. Uh, to produce ozone in the gas phase using electrochemical technology, the electrochemical, the experimental device is shown in this, in this figure. We use an electrolyte, an inert electrolyte that is um, perchloric acid. And uh, we move this electrolyte with a peristaltic pump uh, all the time recirculating through the system. And um, it uh, passed um, through a, a, the microzone cell, uh, which is connected to a power supply just to control the, the current intensity applied. Uh, then the stripping of the ozone from the, uh, from the electrolyte uh, so as that uh, depending on the, the intensity, we obtain a different concentration in, the, uh, in this uh, gas stream. Uh, we can observe in the figure that uh, the higher the current intensity applied, the higher the concentration of the ozone in this uh, gas stream. In the next slide, um, uh, we just uh, want, um, wanted, to, wanted to study the performance of this uh, ozone gas stream in the uh, disinfection of uh, simulated hospital urines uh, just contain uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae, just uh, one bacteria to, to start. Um, we introduced uh, this uh, ozone gas stream into the, into the system using a jet uh, uh, AI reactor. And uh, what we observe in the figure is that um, the, the production of uh, ozone uh, when we when the, the concentration of uh, ozone in the gas stream uh, is higher, we obtain a higher removal of, uh, of the antibiotic resistant bacteria. Uh, but uh, it's not enough uh, to attain the complete disinfection since uh, the ozone um, 
in the next slide, uh, we can see that the DO zone uh, um, react uh, killing the bacteria, but also in the next slide, please. And uh, we can observe that uh, it can uh, react with uh, the uric acid that is uh, one of the organic compounds naturally contained in, um, in, in urine. And uh, finally, in the, in the last one, in the next slide, please, um, we are also um, studying the, the performance of these oxidants in gas phase um, just to disinfect the gaseous hospital effluent. Uh, here, uh, you can observe that the production of the ozone gas, uh, the experimental uh, setup is the same that I told you uh, that I have described uh, before. And here, uh, we use a simulation uh, chamber where we put in contact the, the ozone gas stream that came from the electrochemical uh, production using also a microsome cell uh, with um, a um, with a, a simulation of a hospital indoor air. And uh, in the figure, we can observe that uh, we are obtaining a really promising result to continue studying on, on this, uh, because uh, here uh, we use also the airborne uh, Klebsiella, Klebsiella pneumoniae. Uh, and we observe that uh, when we work in a, in a continuous mode, uh, we are able to maintain uh, four or five logs of uh, removal of this bacteria in the air. Uh, so um, uh, we are working on, um, uh, on, the, on coupling this technology to the air conditioning installation in, in, in hospital. Okay. And uh, just to summarize in, in the next slide, uh, the conclusion, uh, just to say that uh, depending on the, on the electrochemical cell uh, use, uh, we are going to promote uh, one or other um, oxidants. Um, and that uh, um, if we are using um, uh, oxidants in the gas phase, we, obtaining, uh, we are obtaining a promising result to continue on this uh, line that may increase the technology uh, readiness level of these, um, of these commercial electrosonizers. So um, thank you very much for your, in the next slide, um, just thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you have some question or comments, just um, maybe I can. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Gracia, for your, your nice presentation. And um, there are a few questions. Uh, since you are talking with microfluidic cells, the first question is, uh, uh, what is the energy consumption that you are uh, requiring, the specific energy consumption that is required with such systems? And what is the size of electrode required to, to treat with the wastewater and urine of hospital? And according to the size of the hospital, what is the size of electrode required in square meter? Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't have here the, um, the, the data, but um, in the presentation, I have uh, put the, the, uh, the papers that are already uh, published where we compare the energy consumption between the uh, microfluidic and the microsome cell. And as I have, uh, I don't have the specific data, but uh, you can find it there. And um, uh, as I told you in the, during the presentation, uh, the microsome is, um, we uh, obtain a, a faster uh, removal of the bacteria, but the microfluidic flow through a cell is uh, much more efficient uh, than, the, than the microsome. Um, Emmanuel, I think you are mute. Thank you, Gracia. Uh, the second question, just to be quick, if I understood it, is, is uh, regarding the mechanism of oxidation to treat the hospital uh, with water. How is it? What is the mechanism? Because you can not only disinfect, right? You can treat other compounds, eliminate, remove. Yeah. Um, well, um... As uh, we, in the case of uh, producing the oxidants in the same media that uh, we have the, the, the target bacteria, 
Um, in this case, um, the, the carbon intensities applied are um, really low because we, we just uh, want to uh, remove the antibiotic resistant bacteria. We don't, we don't want to degrade uh, the organic, uh, the organic um, compounds that, for example, in okay. our case, uh, we have mm. in, the, in the urine. Because what we, with, what we want to propose is a pretreatment, you know, just uh, to uh, remove the antibiotic resistant bacteria, not these, um, not these uh, organic compounds uh, that uh, could be uh, removed in a wastewater treatment plan in a conventional one, okay. even though uh, these organic compounds uh, are not, uh, don't, do not present any toxicity because mm -hmm. we have already done tests of, uh, with the uh, bibliophysity and uh, mm -hmm. it does not present any, any, so it's not our objective to degrade the, okay. the, these organic compounds. Thank you, Andresia. So we will switch to Jan Feng. Jan Feng is there? Yes. Yes, oh. good. So let me, so I will introduce you briefly. So Jan Feng Zhu, uh, Jan Feng Zhu is an assistant professor at Georgia Tech Shenzhen Institute in China. And he was formerly graduated at Georgia, in, Georgia Tech uh, in the USA. And his research interest in, is in environmental nanotechnology, weather treatment technology, and next generation energy sources. And we are pleased uh, today to have uh, Jian Feng Zhu to present uh, the, um, uh, the locally enhanced electric field treatment uh, for uh, water and wastewater disinfection. So please, uh, Jian Feng, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jian Feng. Uh, just uh, as uh, I'm an assistant professor at Georgia Tech Shenzhen. So we kind of a new campus of Georgia Tech at um, uh, in China. So next slide, please. So in, in general, uh, in this talk, we have about 15 minutes. So I really want to spend most of the time to talk about why we want to use a lift or we call it locally enhanced electric fuel treatment for water disinfection, but not uh, what we did before. So in general, it's kind of a short uh, presentation and uh, I just want to focus on why we want to do this. So first, a little bit of the conventional electric electric field treatment, or we say EFT. So in general, if we have two electrodes and place the bacteria uh, between, so and apply a very high electric field about like tens of several kilovolts, we can, uh, and um, the, the, the cell membrane of, the bacteria will be damaged, okay? As uh, the figure on the right hand side shown. So there'll be a water channel that is created on the uh, cell membrane. And if the electric field is uh, high enough, there will be a, 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 a kind of a irreversible water channels, okay? These water channels will make the intracellular substance to release uh, out of the cells. So making the bacteria inactivated. And this process, we call it electroporation. So just uh, create pores on the uh, cell membrane by electricity. And uh, the, the major uh, advantage of this process is that it's a physical process. Okay? Physical process means that there will be no chemical reactions or chemical disinfectants involved. So uh, as we all know that the, the disinfection byproduct, byproducts, the DBPs, are the major problems when we do the uh, water disinfection using the chlorine and other uh, oxidants. So if it's a physical process, then we will have no concerns on the DBP. But, but the biggest issue is that it, it really uses a very high energy. So it uh, just uh, apply very uh, high uh, voltage. And also the instrument to generate such kind of a, a voltage is also very expensive. And also if you generate some electric current, you know, the, the, heat, is gen the heat is generated, which means that you also need a cooling system. So making all the process very energy uh, uh, energy intensive, so that for water disinfection, almost there will be almost no applications. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Great. And uh, uh, there, there will be several kicks. And uh, so we just introduced our uh, locally enhanced electric field treatment. Okay? Instead of uh, we just uh, apply a very strong electric field, we have some tricks to enhance the local 
uh, electric field to uh, to trigger the electrical operation. So one um, method is called the Markov scale enhancement. This mostly involve the um, uh, reactor design. So for example, if we design this uh, tubular coaxial electrode configuration, we have a center electrode, very thin center electrode, and an outer uh, cylindrical electrode. So the, the electric field near the center area will be enhanced dramatically. Okay? And uh, the ambient um, electric field will be lower. And uh, we also have another uh, micro scale enhancement. You can just uh, click maybe several times to show the um, yes, you can just show the actual everything. Uh, great, there should be a, a yeah, that's all. And uh, another method is that, is that just uh, we, we create a, uh, a nanoware, okay, or we can one, one we say one dimensional nanostructure on the surface of the electrode. So, because of the lightning rod effect, so the the uh, the electric field near the tip area of the uh, nanoware will be enhanced dramatically to maybe five to seven orders of magnitude so that we only apply, <laughs> need to apply several voltages. For example, in our experiment, experiment one volt is good enough to, to inactivate this uh, bacteria. And uh, uh, because of this, also, you know, uh, we just uh, reduce the apply voltage dramatically uh, so that the energy is efficient. Uh, next slide, please. So here are some uh, some of the things that I have done during my PhD. So uh, in general, just give you a, a heads up, so just a very a quick overview. So firstly, we did some sy system design. So system design indicates how the reactor looks like, how the electrodes look like. All right? And uh, the, the second thing is the process design. So in general, LEAF is a kind of very new technology that uh, most of our work have been done only in the lab. So no like field test, no pilot test. So we haven't moved that far, uh, but also lift have some limitations. Uh, the major limitation will be the uh, uh, fragile nanowires, okay? Because these nanowires are uh, kind of uh, vertical are very long so that uh, there will be chemical, electrochemical corrosion. There will be um, uh, the, the water flushing, the, uh, these kind of uh, mechanical uh, forces, uh, so that the the lifetime of these nanowires is the major restriction for us currently. So that we just uh, combine the lift with other technologies, for example, ozone, for example, electrochemical copper. These methods they just uh, uh, compensate uh, others' disadvantage or limitations. <clears throat> and also, after we got pretty good disinfection efficiency, got good results, we want to know why. Okay, so the why does uh, directs to the mechanism study. Okay? The mechanism study we not only used uh, some uh, exper experiment experimental methods, but also some uh, comput computational simulations. And lastly, <laughs> about the energies. So uh, most of uh, our speakers talk about the electricity based uh, processes. So the, the major problem is where the electricity comes. So we also develop some kind of point of use or we say decentralized uh, novel energy sources to power the lift disinfection. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Here, just a very uh, briefly talk about what we have done before. So this work, we just uh, combine the, the two uh, enhancement methods, the micro and macro. So the, the idea is pretty easy. So, and we just uh, develop this tubular coaxial electrical configuration and apply very strong electric field enhancement. And uh, next slide, please. And you may be curious about what the nanoware look like. So we, uh, the nanowares that uh, most of us use is uh, the, the, the copper oxide nanowares. And because there will be a kind of a copper uh, release problem so that we just coat the, the copper oxide nanoware with a thin layer of polydopamine. These kind of a very thin polymers can cover the surface very well and the, the thickness of these uh, 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 coatings can be controlled so that we can uh, enhance its stability, but not uh, reduce the uh, apply voltage, uh, reduce the uh, electric field. And also on the right-hand side, these are the images that uh, uh, the, the nanowires look like. Uh, next slide, please. And here's the process design. We will just uh, firstly combine with ozone. So we, I will not go into the details, but in general, you know, every method has its restriction, right? But if we combine two methods, 
the, 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 the limitations will be reduced. And also we observe the enhancement effect. This means that uh, the disinfection efficiency achieve a kind of one plus one higher than two uh, effect. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Uh, just uh, move to, uh, 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 this is the, the, the performance, a little bit about the performance. So you can see at the lower voltages, lower than 0.4 uh, volts. So the, 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 the theoretical line, which is the red, red curve and the, the blue curve, which is the experimental one, just, uh, just, uh, just uh, overlap. And uh, after, the, uh, uh, after a threshold, you can see an uh, increase of the uh, experimental results compared with the uh, uh, theoretical one, which means that just uh, as I mentioned, the lift can promote the inactivation efficiency of ozone. Uh, next one, please. Uh, next one. So this is just the uh, details. Uh, you can refer to the paper for, for more uh, of these uh, uh, results. Uh, next one. Yeah, this one is uh, just to show you a little bit about the energy source. So this is uh, the, the, uh, we just combine our lift technology with the tribal electric, uh, tribal electric nano generators, or we call it TNG. So this is a kind of a good uh, energy source because it can harvest low uh, frequency uh, movement. For example, the rotating of our hand. So if we rotate the handle here, the water can be transported from one side to the other. And uh, when it goes into the system, it can be inactivated by our device. So here's a short, re short video showing how we did the experiments. Yeah, you can see if we rotate the handle, <coughs> the water just transform, transport from one side to the other, and the uh, uh, electric voltage can be generated very stable uh, in, the, in the background. <coughs> uh, next one, please. Okay, and turn to the next next page. Yeah, so this is also a kind of a self-explained example. So all of us have an example, uh, have a smartphone in our hand. And also the, the, the battery of the smartphone gets stronger and stronger. So that we just uh, develop such kind of a electric chip and a, a, a user interface uh, app. So that make the battery become a, a electrochemical workstation. So with this workstation, so we can just uh, disinfect the water uh, uh, all the time if we have a, a cell phone in our hand. Uh, next one, please. Uh, lastly, just a little bit summary. So. So we have developed such uh, 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 things. And uh, the major take home message is that it's a physical process. And which means that actually for the uh, standalone uh, technology, we do not need extra uh, disinfectants. And also uh, potentially there will be no uh, DVP formation. And uh, it potentially be applied in different scales. Okay, you can see different colors. We can do the uh, primary, secondary, and the point of use water disinfection. And the next slide, please. And this is the last one. So I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Xingxie at Georgia Tech. So he taught me a lot during my PhD study and all of my group members. So without them, I will go nowhere. So, and also these funding agencies. And uh, thank you all for your time and listening. So I would like to take uh, questions and comments. Thank you, Zhang Feng, for your nice presentation. And this is interesting device and technology. Um, so I have a first question is about the electrode potential and the applied current you applied. What is uh, what are the values of because you mentioned about the cell voltage, right? The values. What is the electrode potential uh, at each electrode? Uh, do you know? Yeah. Uh, firstly, we would like to use uh, applied voltage instead of the potential because. You know, uh, for mm -hmm. all our system, we use positive electrode, negative electrode, but not cathode or anode, because we consider our technology as a electrophysical process, but not an electrochemical process. So that we okay. prefer to not to use the the the, the, the terminologies in electrochemical mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, uh, okay. that, that's uh, depend depending on the morphology or the aspect ratio of the nanowires. So for our best uh, practice, we can use only one volt to kill 10 logs of uh, E. coli with only 10 minute retention time. Okay. Um, so is it electrosorption phenomena as well? I mean, is there, there electrosorption? Yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, uh, electrosorption, we call it uh, electrostatic attraction. So because the cells, most of the cells are negatively charged. So that they will move to the positive mm -hmm. electrode. So that's kind of a, one of the okay. major mechanism that 
that we use because you know in the in the water bacteria are everywhere okay but actually the strong electric field is only exist on the surface of the electrodes so that we want to drag the bacteria from the ambient to near to the electrodes mm -hmm. so that we use electrostatic attraction as well as the dielectrophoretic forces uh, depending mm -hmm. on different uh, designs okay and what is what is the current when you apply one volt what is the related current in ampere uh, uh, uh pardon me what's the, what is the relative how, how many ampere how many what is the intensity uh, when I, I you apply uh, one volt one volt you have an intensity related to this one volt right what is the intensity? Uh, yes only one volt yeah yeah but you don't have the intensity okay and uh, what is the power that you can generate with tribo electricity with tribo the hand power <laughs> yeah uh the, the the tribal electric the tng so it depending on how large your device is so for example for our application as i just mentioned uh you know the tribal electricity it generates ac the, the alternative current so then in okay. this uh, case we want to generate for example we want to generate 1.5 volts for the disinfection because mm -hmm. you know sometimes if we just generate one volt it's not sufficient so that we just generate 1.5 uh, volts with the, the the rotation speed about 60 or 100 rpm so that's kind of what most of the adults can can just rotate like that and you see uh, we need such that big device to generate 1.5 volts yeah okay and is it uh, efficient for any kind of microorganism because you were uh, mentioning transport phenomena but they may even there may not be all charged microorganisms so did you try many kind of microorganisms? Yeah, for, for now, because most of them are just a lab uh, demonstration. So for the disinfection, we, we say like we primarily we just uh, use a lot of uh, different uh, model microorganisms on the disinfection. So in the disinfection part, we use uh, bacteria, the gram positive, gram negative, the rod shape, the, uh, the, 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 the round shape, the different shapes. Uh, we have tested several uh, kinds, about maybe six or seven, and also we tested the viruses, the the MS2, so the the all the model viruses. So mm -hmm. and uh, most of uh, them show a pretty good uh, disinfection efficiency. But in uh, in terms of the movement, the uh, electrode absorption, so we haven't done a very uh, systematic study on that actually. Uh, but uh, it's kind of a very interesting study that we're gonna consider in the future. Okay, and one last question is about the scale up. Do you know how you intend to scale up it, or do you want to keep it small for the centralized system, for example, or do you want to do you intend to integrate it in centralized system? You, you mean so uh, uh, use it in a small scale or a larger yes. scale? Is that a question? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. So, I, actually, I, re, I, I believe every uh, development. So all our inventors may want to use it at the full scale, okay? If it's mm -hmm. possible, I want to use it in the, in the drinking water treatment plant, in the wastewater treatment plant. That's okay. the mm -hmm. ultimate goal, okay? Mm -hmm. I really want to do that. But actually, we, we mm -hmm. still, the, the, our technology was developed about, about uh, nine years ago. So it's not a very uh, a mature method. And for mm -hmm. now, we only can treat like a, a uh, very uh, like household level uh, water usage, okay? Not a very lar lar large scale, scale, but if possible, we, we really want to make it uh, larger to use uh, in, a, in a full scale kind of a water treatment plant. Yeah, that's our uh, future uh, dream. Okay, good. Uh, one last question I was, I come back to the current because uh, someone is asking, can you apply a current as well instead of voltage or? Uh, can, uh, can I use the current instead of current voltage? Current instead of voltage, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, a, a good, uh, that's a interesting question, but actually uh, because electroporation, this mm -hmm. is a, a, a electric field induced process. Yeah. Okay. In this way, we do not need electric current. So actually, as, as, as you can see, we just uh, grow the nanowires on the electrodes. Right in my development, but for our other lab mates, if we have suspended nanowires in the liquid, mm -hmm. it will also concentrate the electric field. 
there will be no current over there. All right. So that which means that the, the, the voltage or the electric field is more important than the uh, current. Yeah. Okay. And I was just thinking last thing, uh, the lifetime of your electrode, uh, of your material, uh, you were mentioning that it should be not that long. How long is it for now? The lifetime of your, of your material. The, the lifetime? Yes, of your Great. material. Yeah. yeah. I got your point. Uh, yeah. The lifetime uh, for the, for the uh, uh, best practice, we can use the nanowires for as long as 15 days. One five, okay. one 15, 15 mm -hmm. days. And uh, okay. actually, it's not a very long time. But actually, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of our development, the electrodes can be only used for five minutes. Okay. Right? Okay. Five minutes, then one hour, then 12 hours, then for now, 15 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, it seems like not a very big achievement comparing with other methods. But still, mm -hmm. for us, it's kind of very uh, a milestone uh, finding for us. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so thank you. Good luck for that. And uh, so thank, thank you. you and for, thank you all the questions. Thank you for your presentation. I think we'll go to the conclusion now and the poll. Well, so thank you again uh, to the speakers who uh, who accepted to present their, their, their works and uh, to have a, a discussion with the attendees. And um, now we're going to go to the poll. As a second poll, uh, <clears throat> uh, we would like to ask you, according to you, which disinfection technology or combination of technology, multiple answers are possible, would be the most interesting to be applied? Uh, okay, so either UV light based systems, electropulse oxidation systems, electrochemical based processes, locally enhanced electric field systems, chlorination based systems ozone based systems, um, so paracetic acid uh, systems, and something not on the list, maybe or so. So we'll leave you on one minute, one to two minutes to answer, and then we're going to get uh, the results and we go to the conclusion. Okay, then, so we got uh, the results. So it seems that we have the preferred one like UV LED based systems, the one. Uh, kind of system that has been pre that has been presented at the beginning of this webinar and electrochemical and electric based system seems also interesting seems interesting people that are attending this uh, this webinar so that's an interesting uh, interesting uh, global view of, of of it so um, thank you again for participating to this poll uh, that's interesting, uh, interesting result. So now we're gonna go to the conclusion directly. So just a few take home messages. So there are several emerging technologies like uh, electrochemical and electrical based systems uh, that have been presented today. And there are, there could, be, there could be other one as well. So it was not exhaustive, of, co of course. So there is a need for suitable and sustainable disinfection technologies for long-term efficiency without disinfection by product issues. This is another, uh, another take-home message. And there is not only one single technology that could answer all disinfection issues, right? So there is a need for a solution toolbox to select and combine on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. basis. Okay, next slide. So there are upcoming webinars uh, organized again by the disinfection specialist group from the IOA. Uh, that will be in the during the first semester of 2023, uh, right? So one would be around the challenges and opportunities in identification, risk-based prioritization and control of disinfection byproducts in drinking water. And another one would be um, about emerging technologies for water and wastewater treatment that enlarge to other um, other uh, processes like chlorine related or, or ozone related or organic peroxy acid systems um, to enlarge uh, to to complete the view or the global view that we have started to present you today uh, with this webinar and we really hope, we really hope it could help you to to understand better and see. Uh, 
uh, on discover maybe other kind of uh, processes that could be applied in the near future. Okay, and um, so we would like to thank you for your attention uh, for this uh, webinar. And you can still join our network of weather professionals, of course, with the discounts, 20 discounts off if you are a new member. Uh, you have until 31st of December 2022 to, to do it uh, with, uh, by using the code uh, written on this slide. So again, we would like to thank you for your attention. And that's a real pleasure to organize it uh, with iWay. And hope to see you for the next webinars. And uh, thank you, everyone. Bye.